God bless you. Good morning to you. Praise the Lord. We are here again. It is Monday, December the 7th. The end of the year is approaching quickly, very quickly. Oh, I pray that you had a restful, peaceful, most enjoyable weekend. Oh, it's a little nippy pretty much all around the country. This is Breaking Bread Ministries again, and we are here to look into the, the word of God. Let me turn this thing off. Turn the uh, phones off and turn the music down. Well, I'll just turn it off so you can hear me as well since I got it open. But anyway, then turn on piano radio, a curated collection of peaceful piano music. Yeah, there we go. You can hear me and you don't have to listen to that music that I was listening to. I like wordless music, instrumental. Anyways, once again, I am Evangeline Weiss. Thank you for um, the returning and new viewers. I appreciate you both. And uh, we are a Bible study teaching where we just look into what the word of God has to say to us today. And um, if you have any prayer requests, always send those um, comments and I will respond as necessary. All right. Sorry, we want, always want to go into a word of prayer. And if you haven't done so already, um, get your Bibles, iPads, pencils, papers, whatever you need to take your notes so that you can follow along and you can, in your leisure time, go back and go through the word as well. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and go through uh, the throne of grace right now and give God glory, honor and praise for waking us up this morning and starting us on. Our way, and I don't know whether you're viewing it noon, uh, evening, or whatever, but this is a day that the Lord has made that we can rejoice and be glad in it, and that is our purpose to rejoice and be glad in it. And we want to give God the glory, the honor, the praise for He does all things well, He does all things well. We can't even lift our heads without him allowing it. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for that touch that quickened us and it allows us to go forth. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We are gathered in your name. You are in the midst, O oh Lord. So we thank you for your presence. We ask that you hide me behind in the shadows, O oh Lord. Let your spirit step forth and have your way in this study hour. Once again, oh Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we pray, oh Lord, that this will not fall on deaf ears, but it will do that that you accomplished or sent it forth to do, and it will accomplish that that you sent it forth to do. For we know that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. Hallelujah and amen. Bless the Lord. All oh, my soul, bless holy name. Like I said, it's Monday. It's a little rainy off and on, and I'm in Florida. I don't know where you are. It might be snowy. It may be sunny, but today it is a little wet outside, but we're going to continue and give God the glory and the praise anyhow. Whew, it led to call it, we always get more than one spoiler alert before scheming backfires. Always get more than one spoiler alert before scheming backfires. Now, everybody knows what a spoiler is, but just in case you're not following along with the thinking, um, a spoiler is something like something that is leaked, leaked information about it could be about a movie, it could be about a book, it could be about an event, but it's a plot or even a plot of information that 
could spoil the suspense or the surprise. And that's why we call it a, I'm calling this a spoiler alert. We're going to start off in the book of Mark this morning, the book of Mark at the very first chapter in the book of Mark. Starting with one and one, Mark one and one. And, and it reads as thus. This is John the Baptist prepares the way, the son of God. In the book, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, God said, look, I'm sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare a pathway, a pathway for the Lord's coming make straight roads for him. This, this messenger was John the Baptist. This is who was saying this. He lived in the wilderness and was preaching that bullshit. He was telling them, this is what you ought to do. This is what you need to do. He said, people out into the wilderness to see and hear John and when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. And he wore a leather belt. His food was locust. Now, that's a, quite a diet he had. But his job that he performed was very serious. He was a, 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 a preacher. He was preaching to anyone who could hear him or would listen to him that it was time to turn from their sins and turn to God. Okay. And he did this in the wilderness. And he told the people to confess their sins. He did it at the Jordan River. Okay. Also, we see his name is John the Baptist. And, you know, it doesn't say why, but I'm believing that, okay, we know John was his birth name. He was given, if you know the history about him, but maybe they called him John the Baptist because he went around baptizing people. Okay. I just kind of thought about that and had never really thought about that before. But we knew he was preaching about people, the mission of followers of Christ. Now, this is no different today that we, sh you, we should be doing the exact same. We need to stick to the to the goodness, preparing people for the kingdom, preparing them. It cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right. So if they don't, if they hear everything else being preached and they don't hear a lot of times, it would be in vain. If they haven't heard the good news, that is what you're called to do. That is what every believer is called to do, okay? To let somebody know that there is a God and he had a son, he has a son, and his name is Jesus. And he came here to, you can't get God, back to God if you don't get it right with Jesus, okay? That is his word, not not my word. That's God's word. So we stand on God's word. And when we don't, it's like you're like you're calling God a liar. God doesn't have to lie. And what he wanted us to know, he made a way for us to know it. So we just have to know it, accept it and do it. And that will bring plenty of blessings to us because obedience is better than sacrifice, all right? 
And that is what he did. That was his whole purpose, his whole purpose. OK, now, if we look at Mark chapter three, just turning the page, it's just one page over chapter three. That was an alert that John was doing back there in chapter one. Crying loud and sparing not to let people know what they ought to be doing. OK. And then if you look at chapter three of Mark and start at the first verse, it says Jesus went into the synagogue. And again, he went into the synagogue and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus, not because they wanted to see the man healed or they were happy that the man was about to get a blessing and be restored and get healed. They were looking because they were looking to condemn him or something. OK, so they planned to condemn him. And Jesus said to the man, come and stand in front of everyone. So he put him right out on the front streets. Come on, stand right out here in front of everybody. He turned critics and he asked, is it legal to do good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing harm? Now, he asked them plainly. Do you do right or do you do wrong? We already know it's the Sabbath, but do on the Sabbath, should you do right or should you do wrong? Well, is this a day to save life or to destroy? Is it a day to save or is it a day to destroy? He says, but they wouldn't answer him. Mmm, they got quiet. Now, wait, you're looking for a reason condemning, but now all of a sudden you don't got nothing to say. Okay. Once he says what he has to say, then you now all of a sudden you don't have nothing to say. It says he looked around at he looked around at them angrily because he was deeply disturbed by their hard hearts. See, even though they didn't say what they were thinking, he already knew what they were thinking. Because he knows. He knows. And a lot of times your actions speak for louder than your words anyway. So he knew. He knew what they were thinking. And then he said to the man, reach out your hand. The man reached out his hand and it became normal again. So he healed him. It became normal. He healed him right in front of them. At once, the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to discuss plans for killing Jesus. That one little thing. Now they were looking all along. They were waiting for something. And he knew they were. He knew what they were thinking. But it just goes to show how evil men's hearts can be. Now, rather than to rejoice that this man is no longer has a deformity or, or disability or whatever it was, they used it to bring charges against the Messiah. Wow. Why? Why do people do things like that? They look at seeing your good works and, and being happy that you help someone. They rather use it to talk about you and, 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 and bring charges against you and question your authority. Well, let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Voice. They would rather use it for bad. Chapter twenty six. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to read that from here. 
looking at starting at verse. Well, you know, this whole chapter is about the plot. OK, but I'm going to start at the sixth verse. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had leprosy. During supper, a woman came in with a beautiful jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. Now, it was her perfume. It was, yes, it was in a beautiful jar, but they got upset about it. What a waste of money, they said. She could have sold it for a fortune and given the money to the poor. Now, who are you to tell me to do what to do with my stuff? But that's how they felt. Oh, and you know what? In the end, they probably really didn't care that much about the poor. Were they giving anything to the poor? But they got upset because she poured her oil on Jesus. But Jesus replied, why berate her? Why berate her for doing such a good thing to me? She did a good thing to him. Now, why you want to berate her? Oh, that's true. They don't disappear. It says, but I will not be here with you much longer. Spoiler alert. He's telling them, I won't be here with you much longer. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for the burial. They didn't get it. They heard it, but did they really understand it? It was a spoiler alert, but were they really listening? Were they really paying attention? It says, I assure you, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be talked about. Memory. See, we're still talking about it today, and they'll still be talking about it tomorrow. Because it was meant to be. It was meant to be. Anybody who reads this word will have to reflect on that. Okay? But that was their first pearl alert. Then, then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the leading priest. Okay. Here you go, Judas. He goes to the leading priest and he asks, how much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? Don't tell me because he saw this woman pouring this oil on Jesus that all of a sudden he wanted to, to uh, betray him. No. Something that lives within you. You already know whether you... Uh, appreciate someone or whether you want to advantage of someone. He went and asked, how much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? Now this man, he been walking with him and seeing him doing good all along, helping people, helping people. But you will go and ask, how much can you gain to betray him to them. Well, guess what? That sound like doing evil. That don't sound like doing no good. But that's what was in his heart. And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for the right time and place to betray Jesus. He put a price on his head. He accepted that price. And now he's looking when he can complete his mission. Okay. Verse 17. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us? to prepare the Passover supper. They want to know where to fix it at. As you go into the city, he told them, has come. 
My time has come. Spoiler alert. And I will eat the pan. They listening. Yeah, they listen to the part about pick, fixing the meal. They they listen to him tell them how to go and who to tell. But I don't think they really understood that part where he says the time has come. See, all the other times when they wanted to do what they wanted to do, his time hadn't come. So they really couldn't do anything. They couldn't do what they wanted because it was always a way of escape because his time had not come. But now he says, my time has come. That's a spoiler alert. So the disciples did as Jesus told them to prepare the Passover supper there. They went, they followed instructions and they went to prepare the Passover supper. Okay. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the 12 disciples. While they were eating, he said, you're fellowshipping because, you know, when you're eating, you're always talking in fellowshipping. And Jesus says right up out of the blue, the truth is one of you will betray me. That's another spoiler alert. Are you listening? You'll betray me. Great dis greatly distressed, one by one, they began to ask him, am I the one? Am I the one? Am I Lord? So they heard that. They heard that somebody was going to betray. But did they really comprehend what they heard? They knew what betrayal was. But did they know to the level of the betrayal went? He said, he replied, one of you who is eating with me now will betray me. Must die as the scriptures declared long ago. The scriptures told them long ago. That's a spoiler alert. How well did they really know the scriptures? But how terrible it will be for my betrayer, far better for him if he'd never been born. Okay? Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, teacher, am I, am I, teacher, I'm not the one, am I? Now, he already knew that the part. I guess he's filling Jesus out because look, he already knew he was looking for an opportunity to betray him because he went on, he went on and asked them how much money could he get to betray him. So he knew he was the one, but I guess he's trying to fill Jesus out to see if he knew he was the one. He asked him, teacher, I'm not the one, am I? Jesus said to him, you have said it yourself. Spoiler alert. He answered him, but did he understand him? He answered it plainly. He said, you have said it yourself. He didn't say, no, you're not. He said, no, I don't think so. He said, you have said it yourself. That's a spoiler alert. He told him. He told him he knew what he was going to do. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and he asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it into pieces gave it to the disciples saying, take it, eat it, for this is my body. Said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which is sealed, the, which seals the new, which seals the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. That's communion. So they had the first communion. Okay. The breaking of the bread, the blessing. It was his body. The drinking. Okay. And he said, this, this is what seals the covenant. So he was sealing the covenant right then and there with them. 
between God and his people, it is poured out to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new. And they sang hymns and they went out to the Mount of Olives. So they didn't have the fellowship, they didn't have the dinner, they didn't have the communion, and now they sang songs out to the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives I had in my note, which was a small ridge east of Jerusalem, which is now the Jordan's highest point. It is 2,737 feet up high. If you haven't been to Israel, it is worth the trip. It definitely is. So, verse 31. Tonight, all of you will desert me, Jesus told them. Another spoiler alert. For the scripture said, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will scatter. He's telling them, his hour is here and you're going to desert me. He said, but after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Well, he told him what would happen. Even if everyone else deserts you, I never will. Hmm. Well, Peter, Jesus said, in his heart, he thought he would never. Now, Spoiler alert, Jesus says, you'll deny me three times before the rooster even crows, okay? Well, no, Peter insisted, not even if I have to die with you, I will never deny. And all the other disciples vowed the same. So they all thought that they was in his corner, they got his back. Yeah, sometimes that's how we feel, but you know, Jesus already knew. He already knew how the story would end. He already knew. He was giving them the spoiler alerts to me. And he said, sit here while I go ahead to pray. Okay. He took Peter, James, and John and he began to be filled with anguish and deep distress. His hour was close. And you know, when you know you're getting ready to go through something, you can feel it, the anxiety piling up on you. He said, he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. He only asked them to stay there and watch with him. While he went a little further and he fell on, he fell face down to the ground, praying, praying to his father because his hour had come. He said, my father, if possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. Even though it was heavy up on him. And he already knew what he was facing. He wanted another way, but he wasn't pushing to have his way. He said, if it is possible, but nevertheless, he want his father's will. He wanted to do the will of his father. He says, then he returned to the disciples and he found them asleep. And he said to Peter, couldn't you stay awake and watch with me even one hour? Now, you didn't ask your boys to just stay there and, and wait for a minute and pray. And guess what? You come back and find them asleep. He said to Peter, he said, keep alert and pray. Otherwise, temptation will overpower you. He already knew that they should be praying. 
For though the spirit is willing enough, the body is weak. So you're praying to build up your spirit. Body is weak. He says, again, he left them. You know it was heavy. But your will be done. He returned to them again and found them sleeping. They just couldn't keep their eyes open. And that's just like people, you know, when you want to do right, there's always evil present trying to tempt you to do wrong. Okay? They couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went back to pray a third time, saying the same thing again. And then he came to the disciples and said, Sleeping, still resting, still sleeping, still resting. Look, the time has come. I, the son of man, am betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up. So he didn't try to stay there and prolong it any longer. The hour was there. He knew it was time. And so he woke him up and said, let's go. He didn't did his praying. They couldn't pray with him, even though they wanted to. Their eyes was too heavy. It wasn't. And even as he said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a mob that was armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent out by the leading priests and the other leaders of the people. Judas had given them the prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I go over and give him the kiss of greeting. We like to think that that's the kiss of death. You going over to kiss him, they know that that's the one. Now, they had heard about him, but obviously they didn't recognize him. They didn't know him that well. So he had to point him out. This is the one I'm betraying. This is the one you're looking for. Okay. So that's what Judas does. Greetings, teacher, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, my friend. So he already knew what he came for. He already knew what the kiss was about. The others grabbed Jesus and arrested him on a uh, They arrested him. One of the men with Jesus pulled out a sword and slashed off the ear of the high priest's servant. Oh, so he was ready to fight. He was ready to fight. But put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will be killed by the sword. Don't you realize that I could have asked my father for a thousand angels to protect us? And he would have sent them instantly. He's not fighting it. He's going along with the program. He says, but if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? See, the scripture was written before it even happened. So it had to go. It had to go down. Criminal that you have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me. Now he's questioning them. Am I that dangerous that you've come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Me, the man of peace? Okay. Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. They didn't have an answer. But this is all happening to fulfill the words prophets had recorded in the scripture. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. See there? Spoiler alert come to pass. He said they would leave. And it says they left. All the disciples deserted him and fled. When he's talking to them and asking them why they didn't come before. Because he knew it wasn't his hour. They didn't have an answer anyway. It says then the people who had arrested Jesus, the high priest. I can't say his name right. I'm tongues. Law and other leaders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter was following far behind. Now he scattered, but he was curious because, you know, 
This is the one who said he would die even if he had to, before even the brothers, other brothers spoke up, the other disciples. He was the boisterous one. He was the one, that he, you know, he just, I'm going to defend you, man. I'm with you. I got you. So even though he was scared when it came right down to it, but he, he didn't go to the point where he, he didn't care what was happening. So he followed what he thought was far behind, which was, I guess, a safe distance for him. And eventually, and he went in and he sat with the guards and he waited to see what was going to happen. See, he couldn't. His love compelled him to not just. You know, some people, when they desert you, they desert you and they just run and hide. They ain't gone. And you don't have to look for them. They just totally gone. But not Peter. Peter, he waited. He followed from afar so it wouldn't look like he was following. But he wanted to know what was going to happen. And inside, the leading priest and the entire council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so that they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness there was no testimony there's no testimony they could use who declared that jesus said i am able to destroy the temple of god and rebuild it in three days now they thought he was talking about the building temple then the high priest stood up and said to jesus well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? Jesus remained silent. And that's what we should do sometime. When charges are being leveled against us, sometimes the best thing, your best defense is just being quiet. He says, then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of us whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, yes, it is as you say, and in the future you will see me, the Son of Man sitting at the rock, God's right hand in the place of power coming back on the clouds of heaven. You want to know? Okay, I'll tell you. I'm not defending myself, but I'm going to tell you, yeah, that's who I am. He says, the high priest tore his clothing and show, to show his horror, shouting, blasphemy. Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He must die. Then they spit in his face, hit him with their fists, and slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us who you, Messiah, who hit you that time. So now they just got nasty about it. As Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, a servant came over and saw him. You're one of those with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. Now she recognized Peter and Peter denied it. Here's a spoiler alert coming to pass. He says, I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Now here's a second person to identify. Him. And again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't know the man, he said. A little later, some other bystanders came over to him and said, you must be one of them. We can tell by your Galatian accent. Galilean accent. Well, Peter said, I swear by God, 
I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Spoiler alert for Phil. Suddenly, Galilean accent, I don't know why I was saying Galatian, but anyway, suddenly Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went away crying bitterly. Now he's heard it. Now he's hurt. Now he sees that everything he told him had to discuss how to persuade the Roman government to sentence Jesus to death. Then they bound him and they took him to governor. Okay. When Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. You want to betray him, but now you feel remorse to the leading priest and the other leaders. I have sinned. I declare, for I have betrayed an innocent man. Well, what do we care how you feel about it afterwards once you come to a, a moment of clarity? It's too late. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It is too late. So you have to think about it before you go and do it. This, this is something he never, he obviously didn't think about what he was doing. Okay. Some people I've heard say that when they were eating and he dipped and ate at the same time, that's when, it, I don't know if that's when it entered his heart or if his heart was always kind of wicked. But nevertheless, when he came to his moment of clarity, the devil and got you to do his bit. He didn't care about how remorseful you are now. Then you, you, and your payday ain't worth what you thought it was. And now you want the money. So you throw it down and you walk out and you go kill yourself. And that's why he said it was better that he not been born than one who was going to betray him. Because he already knew his end. You go out and hang yourself. Because you see how you've been used up. And the leading priest picked up the money. We can't put this in the temple tray, they said, since it's against the law to accept money paid for murder. They couldn't accept the money. It says after some decisions, they finally decided to buy the potter's field. And they made it into a cemetery for foreigners that is why the field called the field of blood. It's the field of blood. This fulfills the prophecy that Jeremiah the prophet spoke. And they purchased the potter field as the Lord directed. It wasn't to be spent on anything else. It was already determined that that is what it would be spent on. They didn't know it. They had Jesus is tried before Pilate. Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, yes, it is, as you say. But when the leading priests and the other leaders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear the many charges against you, Pilate demanded? And Jesus said nothing to the governor's surprise. Because people are so quick to defend themselves. Jesus was different. Passover celebration, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious criminal in prison, a man named Barabbas. As the crowd gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus? Who is called the Messiah? So he asked him, which one do you want? He knew very well that the Jewish leaders just then, the, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Leave the innocent man alone because I had a terrible nightmare about him last. To ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So they 
votes. So when the governor asked again, which one of the two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back their reply, Barabbas. They, they, they didn't care about Jesus being innocent. They wanted Barabbas. They knew was guilty. But if I release Barabbas, Pilate asked them, what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? They all shot at crucifying. Crucify the innocent and let the guilty go free. People are like that still today. Crucify the innocent and let the guilty go free. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the crowd only roared the louder, crucifying. They didn't even care about charges at this point. They just wanted him dead. They said, Pilate said to, that Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that the riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water. He said, bring me a bowl of water. He washed his hand before the crowd. He says, I'm innocent of this blood of this man. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yell back, we will take responsibility for his death. We and our children. And that's exactly what we have done. Okay? Because we're guilty. So Pilate released Barabbas to them and he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. A lead-tipped Whip. Whip. Well, whip is bad enough. This one has a lead tip. And then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to crucify him. So they got all of these spoiler alerts before it even actually happened. And they did not care. They weren't listening. They weren't paying attention or they wouldn't have crucified the Lord. They weren't wise. We get spoiler alerts in our life, in our journeys. And when we, like them, run full speed ahead towards the danger, oftentimes not listening to the spoiler alerts that the Lord is giving you to, to keep you from the danger. Then when we hit it full speed ahead, crash, boom, bam, then we holler, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Why do we not listen to the spoiler alerts? Why don't we see? Why don't we see them and, and make the detour? Mm, we're not going to cover the crucifixion today. But some of the the crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head and they placed a stick in his right hand as a scepter. Then they knelt before him in mockery. You're doing all the mockery, yelling, hail, king of the Jews. And they spit on him. They grabbed the stick. They beat him on the head. They hit him on the head. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again, and they led him away to be crucified. And I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And knowing all of this, and he still did it. He still allowed it to happen fair and safety. He went on through with the plan. That's grace. Grace. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for all of mankind. Today, we get spoiler alerts and the Lord is tugging and the Lord is tugging and trying to get you to see, and trying to get you to do right. And we still, we buck like a wild horse wanting it its own way. You see, Gethsemane Garden east of Jerusalem near the brook of Kidron. 
I just had different notes and I uh, didn't really follow a lot of these notes in my teaching today. Just let the Holy Spirit have his way. In the end, that he had to do it if he was going to win us back in right standing to his father so that we would have the same victory and same power and same authority that he has. He had to go through with it. And so he did. We'll do the crucifixion itself on, on another later date. But that was the spoiler alert part, leading all the way up to the crucifixion. These events took place. He told them prop, uh, prophets had already written certain information and prophesied about it. These things would happen. Yet the people were still asleep. And today, people are still asleep. You keep telling people that the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. Christ is going to return. And it will be too late to get it right. And people keep going and doing their own thing. I don't know what's wrong with people. That we're so hard-headed. And that we want our way so much. That we won't listen when when the alert is being sounded. Lord, give us an ear to hear. Give us a heart to change our thinking, our, you know, and, and give us a spirit to receive. To receive your truth, just like you gave it then, you're still giving it now. And we run right into the danger, right into the fire. And then we holler once we get in and help me, save me, spare me, deliver me. And often we put a way of getting out except the mercy and the grace of God. Now is the time that I'd like to give you an opportunity to receive Christ as your savior. If you've never accepted him in your life before, this is your opportunity. For he is the son of God. And if you know that you're not walking in his way and you, you're not allowing him to rule and reign in your life, this is your opportunity to accept him and change and turn around. So you can just repeat this prayer after me. And you will be a part of the family. Father God, I believe that Jesus is your only begotten son. And that he came and he died for me, but he got back up out of the grave. And he took my sin on him so that I would not perish. He now sits in heaven. Help me from this day forward. Help me to pray, worship, all the praise that you so rightly deserve. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving my sins. That I can see your face and stand before you as an innocent person. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And thank you for this new life. Amen and amen. You are now a part of the God's family. Jesus is your big brother making intercession for you. God is your father. This book, the Bible, is your roadmap to life.
It is your roadmap. It's going to help you to gain more strength, more wisdom, more knowledge. All you have to do is read it. What you don't understand, ask the Lord. He will help you to understand. The Holy Spirit, he will send it and you will grow in grace, wisdom, and knowledge by his power. Thank you for joining me. I know you could have been somewhere else, but the Lord sent you by this channel that you might receive a word to help you in this hour. I don't take it lightly. I appreciate your prayers and support through prayer that I stay faithful and you stay faithful. If you have any requests, prayer requests, send them to me at thisjoythatihave at gmail.com. I will agree with my faith to your faith that the manifestation of your prayers will manifest themselves in your life to the glory of God the Father. Thank you. You won't make a hundred every day. Keep praying. Keep blessed. Keep blessing the name of the Lord and you'll see yourself getting strong and strong and stronger. That's all you have to do. Thanks for joining. See you next time on Breaking Bread Ministries with Evangeline Weiss. Five days a week, Monday through Friday. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah.